Good afternoon, guys. How are we all? How's everyone's Monday and Tuesday been? Bear with me. Mike is up. Awesome. <clears throat> hey, Hunter. Hey, Jacob. Quokka, how are you? Bailey, Thomas, Ishan, Path, g'day. How's your Monday, Tuesday been, guys? Daniel, I'm very well, thank you. Hey, Dano, Soph, Balin. All right. I babysit. Talar, who do you uh, who do you babysit? Younger siblings, is it? Hey, Rohan, I'm good, mate. How are you? Balin, day's been okay. Um, bit of a slow start because I had a had a late night. I just have every now and then I have a night that I can't sleep. There's just too much stuff going through my head, so I didn't get to sleep till very late. So I had a slower start this morning, which is funny because we're we're talking about um, morning routines now. So I'm just going to set up um, the Facebook Live and let a few more people roll on. So bear with me. Audio. Facebook Live seems to be playing up. So I'm just going to get one of the boys to jump on and share it through their Facebook. I'll give it one more go. Stop live. Sudhanva, I'm, uh, I'm very well. Brody, no worries. Who have I got here? Seba. Hey, hey buddy. Shall we get on? Legend, thanks, mate. I'll just give it one more crack, and then if not, I'll get you to go. No worries, mate. Go live. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's pretty close to my heart. Absolutely, and so beneficial. Hundred percent. Come on, live stream. No, nah, no good, mate. I'll get you for it. No good. All right, I've got to start recording here then. Um, no, it's all good. I'll, I'll record. It, it, might be, it, it just, if I go live the other way, when I share my screen, remember how it didn't work in Facebook? Yep. So I just need you to share it in the group and um, we're all good. I've got the recording. All right, I don't think it's going to let me go to Facebook unless I am recording. No, no, if you just go straight into the group, like in a web browser. Yeah, so if you go into the group just through like Chrome or Safari or whatever you use and then go into the group and hit live video. Yep. And then um, just click um, share screen application Zoom. Beautiful. And uh, it should come up. Guruaj, how do we watch a live stream on Facebook? Uh, well, Seb's setting that up now, mate. So once it once it goes live, you'll be able to see it. Um, Ananto, how do you create a webinar? We we use, as you can see, we use software called Zoom. Um, so that's something. It's like a subscription. You've got to pay to access Zoom or to use the functions that we want. Then we go in and just set it up in the back end, and obviously send you guys out the link to join. 
Um, and then we create all the content uh, on um, Keynote or Canva or something like that. Sanuka, so yes, it'll go onto YouTube eventually, mate. We upload them all at the end of the week. Um, and then send them all out over the weekend. <clears throat> but you can always go to our YouTube because um, we kind of upload them as we go. Oscar, this will be about 20 minutes, mate. It's not going to be a massively long session. I just want to get in, talk about morning routines and talk about why it's important. Um, I will, Matthew, I'm going to send you our YouTube link. I'll put it in the chat box. Unfortunately, Fitzy, my computer's not um, agreeing with me here. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, what can we do? No. Let me, I might just upload it straight away and just let me. Yeah. It, what I'll do, Seb, I'll, I'll just set the live up and just see if last time was a off chance it didn't work. Yeah. If, when I start uh, sharing my screen. Sorry, guys, one or two minutes and we'll be away. We'll be into it. As I said, it's going to be a short session. But hopefully, information. Maybe grab you can the do. diary and pen. They're waiting. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't got a diary and pen or pad and paper, go and grab that now. Any luck, Fitz? Yeah, I'll, I'll be able to go live. It'll just be... Um, actually, if I use... My entire screen. Yeah, that might work better. All right, guys, is that... Actually, I hadn't hit the final button. If you can just check, Sabra, and confirm um, we're all good. It's loading now. Ananto, sorry to hear that, mate. What happened? Why didn't you have a good day if you're happy to share? All right, guys, I'm going to flip. We go. We're on. Awesome. Sharing screen. Um, so can you see that, Seba, on? There we go. All good. All good. Rightio, guys, welcome to the life lesson with um, obviously myself. This session, this quick session is just going to be all about morning routine. So win the morning to win the day. Something really close to my heart, um, as I said at the start, this is something I use. I'm not going to lie and say that I do this every single day without fail. Um, you obviously go through ebbs and flows in life and sometimes get slack and lazy. But this is something that I try to do 99% of, of the days, um, you know, that I wake up. So I'm going to go through today. I'm going to obviously touch on what a morning routine is. I will visit and talk about what most of us do versus what we should do. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about why you should create a morning routine. I'll show you a little quick short video at the end and then um, I'll touch on a few things that you might be able to pop into your routine and, and I'll show you what my morning routine consists of. Rightio, what is a morning routine? It's a set of habits, thoughts, behaviours and actions and or actions that we do consistently every day before we start the day. All right, and they can either be negative actions or they can be positive actions. Most of us, all right, not all of us, most of us start the day reactively. All right, and that creates a negative state of mind, which I'll talk about later. Right, you can see a little quote there from uh, Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest ever boxers. It's a repetition of affirmations that lead to belief. 
And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. Another little quote there, if you win the morning, you win the day. So I want you to have a quick think about how you start your morning, how you start your day, because your mornings can set the tone for your entire day. All right, it can mean the difference between a productive day or a sluggish one. Having a powerful ripple effect on your mood, happiness and focus. If you leave your day to chance, you'll likely get sidetracked by distractions, other people's priorities and find yourself consumed with stress. All right, now, like I said, I want you to have a quick think about how you start your day, all right? What I've sort of witnessed and people I speak to, most people start their day reactively. So they do things like hitting snooze button two or three times. They, they get up just with enough time to get ready for work, school, uni, or whatever you're doing. Um, a lot of people think negative thoughts. So they think things like, I can't be bothered getting out of bed today. I don't want to do this assignment that I've got to do for school. I hate that teacher that I've got a class with today. You know, lots of little things like that. I could go on and on and on, but you get the gist of that. So the other thing people do, most people actually check their phone straight away. So they wake up, check social media, and they start looking at what other people are doing. They read emails, they read messages, and they start reacting to requests from other people. All right, so you're doing things for other people and worrying about other people rather than doing positive things for yourself first thing in the morning. All right, we call that reacting. Another thing that you do is they perform actions they have to do, all right? Because they got up, got up with just enough time to get to work, school, sport, whatever it is, all they do is the um, necessary things to get ready and go. So things like packing their bag, getting dressed, obviously eating, brushing your teeth, having a shower, things you have to do, all right? And some of those are positive actions, like brushing your teeth, you want to do that. Having a shower, you want to do that. Right, it's good for you, but it's not really things that are, you know, going to fulfill you and make you feel positive and think positive, right? You're sort of reacting and doing things because you have to do them, if that makes sense. And the other thing you do is they rush to get ready for work or school, right? Most people don't leave themselves enough time to comfortably get ready. They, like I said, they hit snooze and you're always on the chase, right? These are all reactive things that put your mind in a, it's a mild state. It's not bad fight or flight. It's just a mild, mild state of fight or flight, which is a stress response our body um, that happens to our body. So who here, just pop in the chat box, who here does similar things to that in the morning? Sometimes me, yep, not really. I'll get up at seven, not me, and can't stop. I sleep in, not really. Get up with plenty of time. Yep, not, not everyone does it, right? And it's great if you don't. If you do what I'm about to go into, that's awesome. But a lot of people start their day like this and start on the reactive back foot. Now, what should you do to start your day? Right, I believe it's not just my belief, guys. This is actually backed by science. And on a lot of studies of high performing people, so athletes, um, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, people that do great things in their life, high achievers, high performers, most of them, 95% of them, start their day on their own terms. So they get up with enough time to do some or all of these things before they start brushing their teeth, having a shower, um, you know, packing their bag, all that sort of stuff. So some of the things I've got there, and these aren't the only things, these are just the most common things and really powerful things and effective things you can do in the morning. So silence and meditation, right? Who here meditates or has some, you know, structured silence in their day? So it helps you clear your mind of negative thoughts. Exercise, as you all know, it's great for your health and mindset. It reduces stress. It makes you feel good. Right, so that's a great thing you can do in the morning. You can learn. So there's lots of different modes of learning. You guys are on here now watching and listening. All right, that's a different mode of learning. You can read a book. You can listen to an audio book. 
But if you're short on time, you can add the learning to your car trip on the way to school or sport or work, whatever it is, right? You can just chuck an audio book in, on in your headsets. You might watch an educational video. So some of the things that you've missed over the last couple of weeks in the four week um, junior program, you might go and watch one of them and catch up in the morning. Uh, another thing you can do is journal or plan. So actually just jot down some things, clear your mind, get, get your thoughts out on paper or the computer. Um, you can plan your day, plan your week. Again, that helps clear your mind moving into the day. Um, you can show gratitude. So in, the, in week one of this program, we ran a challenge where we asked you to, asked you to write down three things you were grateful for um, every morning to start your day. So again, that's actually been scientifically proven that your brain thrives on gratitude. The more we can bring that to the front of our mind, the better we're going to feel and the better we're going to act and behave. All right. The last one I've got there is affirmation or visualization. So keeping your goals and your aspirations at the front of your mind will change your actions during the day. All right, I can guarantee you of that. If you're constantly thinking of the person you want to be become and be in the future, you're going to start to form small actions during the day that aligns with that person in the future. All right, does that make sense? Even for you guys, if you know, you might get on and do a, a five-minute cricket affirmation about the person, the player that you want to be in five years' time. All right? And then the way that works is by constantly having that at the front of your mind and visualising that, all right, it, when you, for example, if you feel lazy and you don't want to go to training one afternoon or you've organised to hit balls and you feel tired and you don't want to go, you've always got that thought, at the top of your mind, front of your mind, that I'm a professional cricket player, you're going to start to act like that and you'll shut out those lazy negative thoughts and, and start to make better choices throughout the day. What do you mean by performing an affirmation? So an affirmation is basically like... you. you so I've got an affirmation for the end of 2020. It's a page long and it talks in like present tense. So it's actually happened. I am, I did, I do this, I do that. So it's basically just reading out your goals as if they've already happened. All right, so I've got one for 2020 and I've got one for 2030. So the 10 year affirmation, which is all about the impact I wanna make and things like that. So you actually read out the person that you want to be on that time frame. So it might be by the end of 2020, I am this, 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 and this. By the end of 2030, I am this, 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 or mine starts with it's December 31st, 2030, and bang, 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 bang. Does that make sense? All right, I'm just going to show you a quick little video. Uh, it's about six minutes long, and this basically summarises a book that I read about uh, morning routines called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, and he's actually got a six-step system that he teaches people to do, and this, this really quickly summarises and talks about why those steps are in the morning routine. How you wake up in the morning affects your entire day. If you begin your morning with momentum, you can keep it up for the rest of the day. So Hall created a morning routine that he calls the Miracle Morning, which helps you start the day full of motivation and enthusiasm. But before we get to the routine, you need to wake up first. And we all know how hard that is in the morning. The old saying, you snooze, you lose, may have a much deeper meaning than any of us have realized. When you delay waking up until you absolutely have to, consider that what you're actually doing is resisting your life. So here are a few tips on how you can resist pressing the snooze button. Move alarm across the room. This forces body movement and motion creates energy, so it helps you wake up. However, you'll still likely be feeling sleepy, so brush your teeth. 
The point is that you're doing a mindless activity for the first few minutes and simply giving your body time to wake up. And since you're in the bathroom already, splash some water on your face. It will wake you up even further. Drink a glass of water. After six to eight hours without water, you'll be naturally dehydrated and dehydration causes fatigue. The objective is to rehydrate your body and mind as fast as possible to replace the water you were deprived of during the hours you slept. All right, so you're up. What now? How do you have a successful morning? Enter Life Savers. S stands for silence. You can either do meditation or just have a deep breathing while you let your mind wander. It will help you clear your head of all the negative thoughts and reduce stress. Just do it for five minutes and work your way up. But make sure you don't do it in bed. You don't want to fall asleep again. A stands for affirmations. Your self-talk has a dramatic influence on your mood. When you design and write out your affirmations, align them with what you want to accomplish and commit to repeating them daily, they make an impression on your subconscious mind. You can overcome your limiting beliefs and behaviors and replace them with those you need to succeed. Here's an example if you want to lose weight. Your affirmation might look something like this. I am 100% committed to going to the gym five days a week and running on a treadmill for 20 minutes. The more specific the actions, the better. Customize them to your needs and also feel free to add some inspiration quotes in. V is for visualization. Visualizing your goals and dreams is believed by some experts to attract your visions in your life. Whether or not you believe in law of attraction, visualization lifts up your spirit and emotions and pulls you toward your vision. It can be a powerful tool for overcoming self-limiting habits such as procrastination. E is for exercise. Morning exercise should be a staple in everyone's daily ritual. When you exercise even for a few minutes every morning, it significantly boosts your energy and mental clarity. Every morning, you gotta get your heart rate up and fill lungs with oxygen. Whether you do some yoga or go for a walk or run is up to you. Me personally, I like to do some light stretching and go to the gym. R is for reading. Whatever you want in your life, there are countless books on how to get it. The key is to learn from the experts, those who have already done what you want to do. With an almost infinite amount of books available on every topic, there are no limits to the knowledge you can gain through daily reading. I recommend making a commitment to read at least 10 pages per day. Let's do some math here. Reading 10 pages per day equals 3,650 per year, which equates approximately 18 200-page personal development books per year. So, 10 pages a day, 18 books per year. I guarantee that if you start reading today, you'll see major improvements in your life. S is for scribing. Scribing is just another word for writing. You can write about anything. You can have a dream journal, write about your goals and plans, lessons learned, and so on. Anything you feel like you need to focus on in your life right now. Writing will help you capture ideas. The process of writing something down forces us to think through it enough to understand it better. So, that's it about Lifesavers. You can do each activity for as long as you wish, but try not to exceed one hour with your morning routine. Try to implement some of the ideas talked about in this video and customize the savers for your needs. And remember, these are just ideas on how you can upgrade your morning. This is not something you have to have to have a great one. All right, thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed. There you go, what do you reckon of that? Nice, <clears throat> nice, simple little video that explains, um, you know, what I'm, I've been talking about. As I said, that's a, a really popular book from the guy that basically, he didn't obviously create morning routines, but he made it a thing by studying lots and lots of high performers. Hal Elrod's his name. 
Um, now lots of people talk about it and, and have written books about it and that. Um, Hayden, there's six, so potentially 10 minutes of each, yeah. Like I, so these are some tips, okay, from what, from my experience of, I've sort of been up and down in making the routines um, consistent. From my experience, these are, these are the four biggest tips, I reckon, um, that have helped me make it more consistent to a point now where I pretty much do it every day. The first one is to prepare. So get things ready the night before and make it a lot easier. If you've got to spend, you know, things like getting your food ready in the morning or packing your bag, even things for your morning routine, make sure that all of that's ready to go, like your book if you read, your journals, whatever it is for you, make sure that you're prepared the night before because if you can cut out all that preparation time in the morning, you're a lot more likely to consistently do it. If you get up and you've got to prepare for 20 minutes to actually do your routine, it's a lot easier to say, nah, I don't feel like doing it. I'm just going to skip it today or I don't have the time to do it. Um, number, number two there is to keep it simple. So again, if it's too complex and too hard to do and takes too long, you are, you're less likely to, to do it consistently. All right. So like, um, that YouTuber said in that video, if it try and keep it under an hour. Number three there is to make it enjoyable. So don't feel like that you have to do everything that I talk about or that was in the video. All right. If you don't enjoy doing it, don't do it. The whole idea about this is to create a, a positive mindset and a good feeling. If you, you know, if you hate reading, see if you can listen to audio books or watch videos. Or if you hate watching videos, see if you enjoy reading. Right? There's other ways of doing things. Same with your exercise. If you hate running and you put that in your routine, you're a lot more likely to go, nah, I don't feel like doing it. So try and find something else that you like. You know, I might be doing burpees or going, I love swimming. So I've found that I'm happy to swim most mornings of the week. I hate running. So running's not in my morning routine. I try and swim in the mornings. Um, the last one there is to be patient. So don't be too hard on yourself. You are going to miss days. Like I said, you're going to ebb and flow, right? You, you'll never, ever get 100% consistency of doing your morning routine. Like I skipped half of my morning routine this morning because I... I just, I couldn't sleep last night. I was up till 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I only had a few hours sleep and uh, yeah, you know, I, I just did the, the core part of my morning routine so that I could get on with the rest of my day. What does my morning routine look like? So basically um, I get up, drink some water and I make a power coffee. So that's got a few different mushroom blends and things like that in it. Um, black coffee, some brain octane oil. So I have that. I love to start my day with that. I sit down at my desk where I am now um, in our spare room and I complete my journal. So I've got a journal where I just scribe out how I'm feeling, um, you know, what's coming up in the day, what I, how I slept, things like that. I've got a gratitude journal that I, that I fill in, which is what I got you guys to do. Uh, and I've got affirmation. So I've got 2030, 2020, and then I've just got daily auto suggestions. There's about, I think, 30 of those. It's one and a half pages that I read out. And that's all about, you know, I'm a master of consistency. I'm a master of my health and fitness. I'm a master of my brain function. So I just read out a heap of short, powerful little affirmation statements like that every morning. Um, then I learn, so I read, watch or listen something and I change that around, right? If I feel like watching a video, it'll be a video. If I feel like listening um, to an audio book or a podcast, I do that. If I feel like reading, I have a read. I meditate on the balcony in the sun. Obviously, that's freezing. I stay inside on the couch, but I've got a, an awesome little 20-minute meditation that I like doing every day. Um, I move, so some kind of movement, whether it be a walk, some push-ups, star jumps. Most of the time I try and make it a swim. At the moment, my gym's closed, as are all gyms. So pardon me, I'm not able to go and do my laps at the pool. So it's got to be something else. And I have an ice bath. Um, so when my gym's open, I go down to a gym where um, I can get in the ocean 
which, which Melbourne Ocean's freezing cold. So I have a steam room and, a, and an ice bath before um, work. And that's kind of the, the last bit of my routine. So that's what mine looks like. Like I said, you don't have to copy that. You don't have to do everything in it. You might just um, learn, move and meditate or something like that. Whatever works for you guys. Hop in the chat box. If you guys do have a routine, something like that at the moment. Colby, how long will it take to become a habit? Uh, it depends for the individual, but there's a lot of thought around if you do it for 30 days, um, it, it becomes a habit. Uh, a bucket list be a good affirmation? Yeah, I reckon. Definitely. When I feel negative, I'm negative my, my whole day, Nick. Yeah, and that, that's pretty much like everyone. Manoj, there's a lot of high performers, uh, what you've just said there, you make your bed. There's a lot of high performers that swear by that. They say that um, making your bed is a really simple thing that you can do that makes you feel like you've had a win or you've had some success. Um, so again, pretty much 100% of high performers make their bed in the morning. That's part of their routine. Uh, it's something that I do, but I don't class it, uh, you know, I don't put it in my routine. It's just something I do out of habit. All right, guys, any questions, pop them in the Q&A box, please. If you've got relevant questions. And I'm going to come back to just my mug. Jaden, any questions, guys? Are we all good? We'll leave it there. Lachlan, is this compulsory? What do you mean by that? You don't have to do this by any means. This is just something that when I do this, I feel amazing compared to when I don't. So it's just something that I'm sharing with you guys. It's worked really well for me. I didn't start doing it till about two or three years ago. The whole idea of what we're trying to do here, guys, is share with you things that have worked for us so that you can make them a habit at your age, which I wish I did. And you probably hear that all the time, but that is the, the dead honest truth. The stuff that we've learned and the stuff that we're sharing is stuff that we wish that we knew when we were... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, because you guys are a lot more of a, a, a blank sheet of paper, I suppose, than we are. It's a lot easier for you guys to create good habits than it is for us because we've, you know, I've gone 30 odd years or whatever doing what I said at the start, getting up, you know, with just enough amount of time to brush my teeth, have a shower, pack my bag, and go to work. Um, when I started doing the morning routine, it made a big, big impact on how I felt and how I performed through the day, which is probably why my life's got a lot better in the last three or four years than it was, you know, prior to that. Tom, can we hit balls in the morning? 100%, mate. That might be your exercise or your moving, your activity, and that's a positive thing. You're a cricketer. You want to get better, so it's a great way to start your day. Daniel, could a schedule of the day be a writing task? What do you mean by that? A schedule of the day? Yeah, definitely. If you've got a writing task, um, you could do that in the morning for sure. Marlon, is it hard to create a morning routine? It's not hard to create a morning routine, Marlon. It's, it's probably harder to make it a habit. But yes, it is, it is actually hard to consistently do a morning routine because there are going to be times when you're tired or you can't be bothered. If you spend 30 to 60 minutes, that means you've got to set your alarm clock 30 to 60 minutes earlier. All right? And not many people love getting up early in the morning, but it's a time of day where we can, if we start and use that time well, it's not just the positive effects of, you know, exercising, meditating, learning, right? they're all great uses of time, but it's also the effect that it has on your mood, um, your mindset, your productivity and your performance throughout that whole day as well. So it's, there's more than one benefit. 
Um, Lena, what if you're on a tournament? I'm assuming cricket tournament. You get up an hour earlier than your, your team manager says you have to and you do your morning routine because it's going to make you perform better. Hamish, on weekends, is it fine to let it slip a bit? Yeah, to be honest, mate, that's when I... Like, I still do it on some weekends and some days and some Saturday and Sundays, but if I choose to have a morning off and just veg out and relax, then, um, yeah, for sure, you know, whatever works for you. But if you can try and do it every day, it's obviously going to be um, more beneficial. Adam, is it good to sometimes change some things up just to have a change in life so it doesn't get boring and pointless? Should you do this or not? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, mate, I um, I sometimes watch a video or I sometimes read or sometimes listen. Sometimes I'll cut a couple of things out of the morning routine if I'm getting sick of it. Like sometimes I do breathing, but I don't do that all the time because I don't enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, it, you don't have to do the exact same routine all the time as long as you're using that 30 to 60 minutes before you move into the rest of your day positively and you're learning, you're moving, you know, you're meditating, you're doing something positive for you, then that's going to, you know, that's going to work. But if you're someone that does need variety, for sure, I'd recommend changing things up. Um, anonymous, should we have a night routine? A hundred percent. That's something I'm still working on. I haven't got as consistent with a night routine. Um, but definitely if you can have a routine that you do, uh, for 30 minutes before you go to bed, it's going to help if you sleep, things like reading, meditating, again, all that, that sort of stuff before you sleep has an impact on your, your quality of sleep, which then obviously impacts how you wake up which impacts the rest of the day. So it's like a, you know, a, a cycle, an effective cycle. If you can add in a night routine, 100%. <clears throat> Lachlan, is this compulsory? No. Ananto, should you keep a morning routine for your whole life? 100% yes. Guru, Guru Raj, if we don't do it for a few days, does it kill our consistency? Yeah, look, the more you don't do it, the harder it's going to get to do consistently. So, you know, if you find yourself skipping a day, I had to force myself this morning to do it because I'd had a few hours sleep. All right? Even if you can do two or three things out of your morning routine, it's going to help get that consistency and make it a habit rather than a chore. Hunter, is it good to have someone to exercise with to help motivate you get up? Yes, if that's, I'm very similar to that. Um, I do get motivated by being around other people. <clears throat> Pardon me. So yeah, if you can get someone that you can train with or exercise with and that works for you, then 100%. But you don't want to be reliant on that because there's going to be times when they can't do it with you and, and vice versa, you can't do it with them. Win, are sit-ups fine? Yes, if you're doing them properly, they are. They can hurt your back if you don't do them properly. Daniel, on the morning of a game, could we listen to music instead of a book? Yep, if music makes you feel good, definitely. Would yoga be a good thing to do in your morning routine? Hamish, yes, 100% it would. <clears throat> if you enjoy it, if yoga is something you hate, um, then, like I said, it's the more things you put in there that you don't enjoy, the more likely you are to scrap it. So if you don't mind doing yoga, then there's, uh, there's many positive benefits of yoga. Hayden, is running good in the morning? Same as yoga. Yes, if you do it properly. I've, I've got question marks over running. Um, I prefer, if you're going to run, I'll do sort of, you know, short, sharp interval training. I don't really rate long 10, 12, 5K runs. Um, I just don't see the point of it. You know, you, you never play like that or train like that. It, yes, it's going to make you lose weight and, and look in decent shape, but there's actually been studies on the impact it does on, you know, your knees and your joints and your legs and bones and things like that. Um, again, this is just my opinion. You, you can go and do your own research and study, but I, I don't like long, you know, 
slow running. If, if you're going to run, make it short and sharp. Um, Nash, do you do anything for cricket in the morning? I don't personally because I'm not serious about my playing anymore. I just play for fun. But if I was you guys, I would definitely do something for cricket. But, you know, doing something for your fitness is for cricket. You could do a visualisation or an affirmation. That's good for your cricket. Doing yoga, stretching, that's all really good for cricket. Um, so it doesn't have to be going to hit balls, but you could definitely do that as well. We've got Bailey, no worries. I'll just keep working through the questions, guys. Uh, if you don't want to listen to questions, you don't have to. You're welcome to, to duck off. Um, Anonymous, can we change it every year? Yes, of course. If it's all got, um, if it's all positive actions and things in, in there in the morning routine, then yes, you can freshen it up and tweak it. Um, Ananto, does it impact your whole day? 100%. Your mood, your productivity, how you feel? Yes. Guru Raj, what if we're doing this but not seeing a significant improvement? Um, I guess if it's not working for you, you're not enjoying it, there's, there's no need to keep doing it. But I can guarantee you almost with 100% conviction, if you read books every morning, if you learn every morning, if you do some exercise and movement every, every morning, if you do some affirmations and visualisation, there's no way that it won't uh, have a positive impact. Right? Even just learning, reading like that YouTuber said, if you read 10 pages a day, that's 52 books a year. And if you can honestly say to me that you're not going to have an improvement or a positive impact from that, then I don't believe you. Lena, how many kilometres should you run in the morning? Up to you. I, I can't give you advice on that. Like I said, my opinion is short, sharp interval running is better. Um, depending on what you're trying to achieve, if you're a marathon runner or a triathlete, you know, then training that way is going to benefit you towards achieving the goal you want to achieve. But if you're a cricketer or just a, you know, just an average person wanting to stay fit and healthy, then I think that shorter, sharper stuff's a lot better. Do you need to do morning routines immediately after you wake up? I think so, because if you don't, um, it just gets easy to, to scrap. I find that any time I get into doing something else, I start reacting. So if I read my emails and messages, I start replying to them and thinking about what I have to do that day and emailing back and getting on phone calls. So my best tip is to put your phone on um, airplane mode and do all of this before you take your phone off, off airplane. Could you do it with your parents? Andrew, yeah, 100%. If they're happy to do it and they want to do it, it's a great thing to do as a family. Lachlan, how many push-ups should you do? No idea, mate. How can I? Depends on your size, your strength, all that sort of stuff. Tom, what if we leave the house early and don't have time? Get up earlier. Get up 30 or 60 minutes earlier. Simple as that. No excuses. Aditya, is it okay to do 3K runs? Yeah, like I said, depends what you're trying to achieve out of your runs, mate. Um, but 3Ks, yep, if that's what you want to do and that's how you want to tra train. Marlon, does it make you feel better after you do your routine? Yes, 100%. And, all right, guys, I'm going to leave it there because the questions are starting to look very similar. Um, thanks a lot for jumping on, guys. Like I said, that's something that's made uh, a massive impact on how I feel and how I perform throughout the day. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys. Uh, I hope you take it away and use it. I'd love you to, um, I'd love you to try it out for the week, and just let me know how you feel if it, you know, if it has any positive impact. If you enjoy it. Cheers, guys. See you later.